America has dominated global finance since the end of the Second World War, when the current system was built. Designed to establish the economic foundations of peace on the bedrock of genuine international cooperation. But the economic disaster caused by the coronavirus pandemic could signal a new chapter in financial history, with America's leadership called into question. COVID-19 has shown that America is failing to sort out its own affairs at home, let alone provide global leadership. $484 billion for loans after the first round of funding ran out. Another huge spike in unemployment claims. With a vacuum emerging at the top of the financial order, China is vying to compete for greater control. This is not a case of China becoming Wall Street of an act. The crisis has provided China with an opportunity to show what it's capable of doing, which, in the long run, will tip the balance of power. In global finance, America is king. It controls the world's financial plumbing and accounts for almost a quarter of the world economy. The dollar makes up most central bank reserves and is the currency of international trade. 80% of global supply chains use dollars, which gives America significant power. Whoever controls the flows of money at the end of the day uh, controls a lot of things in the economy and ends up being the puppet master of a lot of things that go on around the world. China hopes to correct this imbalance. There is a growing call from the international community for reforming the global economic governance system, which is a pressing task for us. It already has the world's second largest economy. Its banks are enormous. The banking sector has been growing fairly steadily for the past 10 years, while in America, bank assets have remained relatively stable. And with European banks' assets falling, Chinese banks now have more assets than those in Europe or America. But most of their business is within China. Chinese banks account for only 7% of cross-border lending. So the bank's vast size hasn't translated into influence within the world's financial system yet. Its banks are becoming more active overseas. They are lending to companies, in particular Chinese companies that are globalizing. China is also giving its own currency a more prominent role. In commodities markets, it has convinced a few companies to use the currency. Rio Tinto, which is one of the largest iron ore miners in the world, issued its first contract in Yuan last year. The COVID-19 pandemic could increase China's financial influence. China is now sharing its experience with the rest of the world and providing much needed supplies. 30 tons of equipment to Italy, 500,000 surgical masks to Spain, Following the outbreak in Wuhan, China has positioned itself as a global leader, containing the outbreak, agreeing to deals to suspend repayment of some of its loans, and charging ahead with vaccine development. The COVID crisis, at least so far, has cast a negative shadow on the capacity for leadership of America. It did not try or even show interest in marshalling a global response to this crisis. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. This could offer an opportunity for China because it's tried to fill the vacuum that America has left in terms of global leadership. China's tough response to the crisis and the growing size and depth of its financial markets have helped convince investors it's a safe bet, even as COVID sent other markets crashing. While emerging markets saw the value of bonds plummet earlier this year, China's government bonds remain stable, which is a good gauge of trust in a country's economy. So China has the second biggest bond market in the world. COVID provided the first test that this bond market could resist a crisis um, in a way that typically emerging market bonds don't. It shows investors trust China as an economy that they don't think it's going to collapse overnight. As well as improving its reputation with international investors, China hopes to increase its hold over how money moves around the world. America has huge influence over the current system, thanks to SWIFT, the world's largest network for transferring money. 
It's a messaging system that allows financial institutions to communicate. It's meant to be geopolitically neutral. But because a majority of SWIFT transactions are in dollars, and these are routed through New York, America has used the system to choke its adversaries. Russia feared being excluded after its invasion of Crimea, and some Iranian banks were blocked from using the system in 2018 to enforce US sanctions. So SWIFT is uh, based in Belgium, so it is supposed to be neutral. However, America has a strong influence over it. American can also threaten SWIFT with sanctions if SWIFT does not do what America wants. This is very upsetting for its allies, which would rather the system stays neutral and for the benefit of everyone. For now, China can't hope to challenge America's dominance of SWIFT. Instead, Chinese companies are targeting a different part of the financial system, the way in which consumers spend their money. Most consumer payments rely on American giants, Visa and MasterCard. But Chinese tech companies have developed a series of apps that disrupt this system. Rather than using bank accounts or credit cards for transactions, consumers load money into digital wallets. Consumers can then do almost anything, from paying parking fines to making investments or ordering taxis. Without any of this money flowing through the banks, creating a parallel financial ecosystem. This is potentially very disruptive to the financial system. It changes the way the money moves around the world. It empowers a new set of companies which are so big that even the Chinese government is scared of them. Last year, Chinese customers made mobile payments worth a total of $49 trillion. And the two main Chinese companies offering this tech, Tencent and Ant Financial, are enormous, with a billion users each. COVID-19 may increase their reach. People are doing more shopping online, trying to stay away from cash, which is seen as a potential contaminant. And this is all to the benefit of electronic payment firms. Ant Financial and Tencent are already expanding overseas. Ant Financial's app Alipay is accepted in 56 countries and regions. And other digital wallet firms are buying into their tech. Alipay's QR format has already been adopted by six European mobile wallets. America has reasons to be worried about the Chinese giants. They are getting bigger in the region because they are investing the wallets in Southeast Asia and, and beyond. And in effect, it creates a system that is not reliant on American companies, American standards, American norms. But China faces a major obstacle. Much of the world distrusts its intentions. China denying a cover-up. Where top Chinese officials kept it quiet. After all, Chinese leaders initially denied and covered up the spread of COVID-19. There is always a doubt about what is the ultimate objective that China is pursuing in being so collaborative at the present time. It is not always transparent about the truth and what happens in its own country. In a global financial system, you need transparency, you need to know the facts, what's going on, to make sure the system is in good health. As China's financial sphere of influence grows, it's unclear whether it will complement America's by creating more competition or undermine the existing system. In the end, what we could see is the fragmentation of the global financial system in an America-dominated sphere and a China-dominated sphere. These two systems don't have to be mutually exclusive. They could actually collaborate with each other. If they do, great. If they don't, then it will be harder to move money around the world. It will be a costlier, a more dangerous financial system, and in the end, um, most people will lose out. China may not become the dominant force in global finance anytime soon, but COVID-19 is helping to fast-track its progress. And as the world recovers from the virus and economies begin to open up, China will be well-placed to make significant gains. Thanks for watching. I'm Mathieu Favas, finance correspondent at The Economist. Uh, and if you want to read more about how the COVID crisis is going to change the financial system, please click the link opposite.